Hey there, I'm Richard Eisenbeis for GameZone.com and welcome to Being in Japan. Today, we'll take a look at the newest game in the Parasite Eve series, The Third Birthday. So, let's dive right on in, shall we? Parasite Eve is a 1998 PS1 survival horror RPG set in modern day New York where mitochondria mutation is causing animals and humans alike to change into monsters. You play as rookie cop Ayabrea, the one person immune to this genetic manipulation, and try to defeat the mysterious creature behind it, Eve. Released the following year, Parasite Eve 2 again followed Aya in her battles against the mutated mitochondria monsters, but removed most of the RPG elements for a far more traditional survival horror feel, i.e. Resident Evil. And while it was not as well received as its predecessor, it was still considered a competent sequel. Cut to 11 years later and we have part 3 in the Parasite Eve trilogy, The Third Birthday. Taking place two years after the destruction of New York City by monsters known as The Twisted, insert tentacle monster joke here, an amnesic Ayabrea steps into the quantum leap accelerator and vanishes. She awakens in the past, facing mirror images that are not her own, and driven by her mission to change history for the better. Her only guides on this journey are the team back at CTI, who appear in the form of voices that only Aya can hear. And so Aya finds herself leaping from life to life, striving to set right what once went wrong, and hoping each time that her next leap will... Oh yeah, there are worse things to steal wholesale than the premise to Quantum Leap. But really, Square, didn't we already do this last year with Mickey's plotline in Birth by Sleep? By the genre shift from horror to sci-fi, and the lack of the words Parasite Eve in the title, you probably already guessed that, in most ways, The Third Birthday is more a spiritual sequel than a true one. However, this is a legal choice, not a directorial one. In the 11 years since the release of Parasite Eve 2, Square's rights to Parasite Eve, including its characters, concept, and plot, have expired. So now, much like what happened with Xenosaga, direct allusions to the other games must be avoided due to copyright issues. Of course, the title and genre aren't the only major departures from past games. While Aya's name and likeness have been licensed specifically for this game, Aya is no longer the strong woman she once was. And while this change is explained by the plot, it is still disappointing to see such a strong character become so timid and reserved. Though the story changes may lean towards the negative, the gameplay changes do not. No longer tied down by the slow pace of a survival horror game, The Third Birthday plays as a delightfully chaotic third-person shooter. The feature that sets it apart from other games of this type is the overdrive system that allows Aya to leap into the body of any other human in the area. This not only allows Aya to flank enemies, but gives her access to her new body's weapon and life bar. As Aya is thus rarely alone, she can even coordinate the attacks with other soldiers in the area. She can also enter a limit break state in which she is immune to all damage and is even able to break the defenses of previously invincible enemies with her supercharged attacks. On the back end, the third birthday is filled with numerous RPG elements. Using the OE system, Aya can take the DNA from defeated enemies and mix and match it to grant herself many different randomly activated powers. Then using battle points, Aya is able to buy and upgrade weapons for her arsenal. As an interesting alternative to upgrading for more damage, each gun can also be upgraded to have more impact damage, which lowers the enemy's defenses and allows Aya to dive into the Twisted for massive damage. But even with all these ways of upgrading and doing more damage, the third birthday is still painfully hard. Even on normal, death is common and even if you survive, you will constantly be low on ammo. Many areas and bosses are more puzzle than battle and require a specific solution to pass them. Yet, since checkpoints are quite common, the punishment for death is light. As it runs on the same in-game engine as Crisis Core and Birth by Sleep, it is no surprise that the graphics for the third birthday look so good as to make the PS2 blush. The sound matches the graphics and quality, and besides the occasional random soldier chatter, the game is fully voiced. Of particular note in the third birthday's presentation is the visual representation of the damage system. While it is the host body that takes the actual damage, Aya's body and clothes reflect all the damage she's taken in cuts and bruises. In the extreme, Aya's clothes are nothing but tatters. Though, you can repair it at any save point if that's not your thing. As an extra reward, there are also a number of unlockable costumes usable in New Game Plus. However, several of them are only unlocked via linking your PSP to the Square Enix member site and uploading your saved data. On this page, there are in-game and out-of-game achievements which will net you many in-game items. There are many optional achievements for each mission inside the game itself as well. Don't worry if you miss one though. At each chapter break, you can go back and replay any previous mission from the computer terminal. So, though the game only clocks in at 13 hours on the first playthrough, 
there is a ton of replay value for those who want more. I'll be honest. I have mixed feelings about the third birthday because there are really two ways of looking at it. While Hajime Tabata, the game's director, has claimed many times that the third birthday is not a sequel to Parasite Eve 1 and 2, and is in fact a totally new story, I find such claims laughable. I mean, at first it seems that what he says is true, but by the time the final credits roll, such claims seem to be nothing but legal lip service. Herein lies the problem. The third birthday is a massive departure from the past two games in tone, theme, and setting, moving from a science fiction horror story, which is at least based in real genetics, to a science fantasy action story. If the game is a largely unrelated spiritual successor, i.e. the relationship between System Shock and Bioshock, then the third birthday is an A-tier PSP title. However, as a third game in a series, it doesn't fit the rules of the world as laid down by the two games before it, and that makes it feel... off. Thus, the third birthday will be seen as a betrayal of the series to many, and perhaps rightfully so. But as for me, I still recommend it as a day one buy for anyone who likes time travel or third person shooters. While the story may be hit or miss, the gameplay is solid and presents one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences on the PSP. Anyway, I'm Richard Eisenbeis for GameZone.com. Peace out. Shit.